Welcome back to Flywheel Films. Today we are cross shopping Miatas. One of each generation is present here, but I'm not the one shopping. I'm the one shopping. And we are covering an NA, an NB, an NC, and an ND. So we have some friends that we're very uh, thankful for for letting us drive these. So we have Zach with his beautiful NA, Cameron's NB, John's NC, <laughs> and then Justin's ND. That's right, and we are here at Fly Miata Summer Camp. There's a lot of Miatas over there. We've done a lot of videos on those Miatas. Of course, Fly Miata YouTube channel has a video I did for them, and then we've done a walkthrough of every single Miata here at this car show, also on this channel already. But today, I'm pretty excited, because dude, you're, you're literally shopping for a Miata. This isn't like some clickbaity, like, yeah. oh, what if we were shopping? Mm. You're actually looking yeah. for a Miata. So we have each car, but also each owner of each car to kind of sell you on this Give generation. Give me the elevator pitch for their generation. We're gonna ask them a little bit about why they bought theirs. So we're gonna try to make this not super verbose. We're gonna try to make it short and sweet. Um, obviously, may not be super short, but uh, we'll try to make it like five minutes per car. So let's start with, of course, the OG, the NA. First up, we got Zach's NA, and we have moved to the shade because it is 100 degrees or almost. <laughs> Guys, we're dying, but Brilliant. we're gonna power through. Okay? And Zach came out here from <laughs> Colorado Springs. He's bringing out the Colorado Miata Club. So we had to feature your car. <laughs> Thank so, you, man. Talk it through, boys. Why the NA? Yeah, <laughs> so I actually used to own an NA way back in the day, okay. about four or five years ago. I had a 97M edition, so this will not nice. be my first time driving an NA. But I was curious about, Zach, why did you choose this vehicle? Why did you decide to purchase this NA? So this actually wasn't a purchase. I inherited this car um, from my grandfather. It's incredible. He owned it for about, I think, 16 years. And what's funny is he actually bought it from my dad <laughs> with the intention on selling it because he had a used car dealership. And he ended up falling in love with it and kept it ever since. What um, an incredible story. Two, we so cool. two weeks before he passed, he decided to pass it down to me, and I've just been in love with it ever since. Such a special car. Um, How long has it been in your family, then? So, uh, in the family, I guess, if you count with me and him, 19 years wow. now. Yeah, so That's it's been so in the family cool. a long time. Um, What's your, like, brief elevator pitch of, you've seen we have all the other generations lined up, why should I consider an NA? So, here's what I love about the NAs. One, everybody knows. Pop-up headlights, come on. <laughs> Pop-up headlights, they're iconic. And not only that, they're just so customizable. It's not that every other generation Miata isn't that way, it is, but just, even just the lights, you know, adds like a whole nother customization Absolutely. to it. You know, because there's so many different seven inch lights to choose from is crazy. Most people go with the halos. I'm sorry, you guys are a little basic. I'm calling you out, <laughs> calling you out. Just do some digging. There's love a it. lot, okay? That's all I'm gonna put it out there. But no, I love this car. You know, like the community is great. The parts are pretty cheap. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's easy to maintain, easy to work on. If you don't know how to work on it, you can watch a 20 minute YouTube video and know what you're doing in yeah. 20 minutes. There's a decade run of NA The forums Miata's. are great, yeah. you know. Um, just in my opinion, honestly, if you want your first project car, there's nothing better than a Miata. Right, so. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> it's sweet, yeah. Something classic about this thing. So let's see what you think of it behind the wheel. Cool. Of an NA, that's probably enough to sell it for many people. <laughs> and that's kind of what sold you originally. Yeah, it was. Uh, just the nostalgic feeling of this vintage vibe. I mean, I say vintage, like it's not that old, but <laughs> just waving at other people with your headlights. It's incredible. That's one thing you can do only in an NA. Only in an NA, yeah. So this is a 1.6 liter, NA6, 1991, second model year that the US got. So very early spec. And how's it feel? It, it feels like old times. I think <laughs> this car is a really, it's got so much character. It feels like a go-kart. It is so small and you can feel just how small it is. Um, what it does not have is creature comforts. Right. It's loud, it's small. 
Um, don't have a whole lot of power, especially in the 1.6. My 1.8 was a little bit better, but there's not a, a crazy difference between the two. Yeah, this has, um, it, it, it has horsepower. It has an a amount of horsepower. A positive number, but it is not much to speak of other than that. But man, this is, I don't know, it feels just classic. Like yeah. if you want the classic, like this is the one, the first one that was inspired by the British Roadsters of old, I guess I could say. And so if you like that feeling, it's hard to beat. I mean, a tape deck is still in this yeah. thing. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, no, it, I absolutely adore the NA. I don't know that it's right for me based on what I want out of it. I want to be able to do long haul road trips very comfortably. My wife will probably be accompanying me on a lot of them. And I, I think her tolerance for loud noises and, uh, and cramped space is probably not as high as mine. So I don't know. I, it, this may be a car that is in my car ownership history and might stay there for, for a while, maybe forever, which is sad to think about, but there are some really other compelling off, uh, offerings in the Miata lineup, so. Yeah, I was gonna say, and each of the ones we picked today are, you know, a bit modified. They're not bone stock. That's one way to compare cars, sure, but your ideal car wouldn't be bone stock. It's not even bone stock at all. Yeah. So we have some friends with tastefully modified versions of each generation, and that's why we're doing this. But I can't fault anyone who chooses the NA. It's a special car for, honestly, just great low-speed cruising. You can't even be upset if your NA is low on power because you're just vibing, man. It's an experience. Every time we drive one, it's just an experience. It really is. Pink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we should move on to the NB. Let's check and it see out. See what Let's Cameron go. says about his car. Let's chat with Mr. Cameron. All right, we got Cameron with his lovely NB here. Actually, my first Miata friend in Colorado. So this is right. a good history with this car. Yeah. This is not a Mazda Speed, but the, the keen viewer might notice it has Mazda Speed wheels, but this is just a, Andy, what year is it, 05? It's 2004. 04, okay. Yeah. And uh, Cameron, why did you choose an NB over an A and C ND? What was your reasoning behind picking up this specific car? Uh, well, I'll be honest, it was largely fit the budget. Okay, um, yeah. So, yeah, I had a, uh, a Mazda Speed 6, got an accident, somebody, uh, you know, side toyed me, and uh, this was this was what I was looking at. Um, I love that. Well, it has a good manual transmission. Yeah. Five speed, not the six speed, um, so it's pretty durable. Uh, kind of the last of the Miata generations before they really kind of got computerized. So yeah, for sure. Not a lot of power like like most, but uh, <laughs> um, you know, no no ABS, no track control. It's Very all analog. All up to you yeah. as a driver. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if if I'm looking at all the generation of Miatas, what would be like your elevator pitch for me to choose an NB over the other ones? Absolutely. So um, I would say NB is a, is a good choice uh, for some of those reasons. Yeah, if you're looking for a, a very analog budget, thing, analog. Um, the top goes up and down nice and easy. You know, it's, it's unlike a power hard you top. You don't have to wait and hit the button. Nope, no, you just <laughs> flip it up and down. Um, yeah, they're they're easy to work on. Yeah, um, super seems simple. like there's lots of parts. And of course, due to their age, they've, uh, you know, all the problems have been figured out yeah. and solutions have been put in You're place. You're probably not running into too many new issues with the NB Miata. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Cool. Yeah, they're just, they're a lot of fun. I, I think it's still more of a, a raw kind of Miata, you yeah. know, kind of uh, ethos that it still has, but but you still have some of those creature comforts like variable valve timing for a little extra uh, power, you know, some half decent headlights, that sort of thing. Yeah, I was gonna say it feels old school, but more power than the old school one we just drove. <laughs> so right, yeah. maybe we should drive this and see how the power feels. Yeah. All right, yeah, take a look. So give it the beans. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no, I mean, it, it definitely is like same but different. Like, right. you can absolutely tell that this is, it shares a platform with the NA, but like Cameron said, you kind of get some niceties that aren't available in an NA. Yeah. And that makes it a little bit compelling because all of the NBs come with the 1.8 and they have more power because of that. Like Cameron said, there's some VVT stuff in there, so you kind of get a more modern feeling drivetrain. And for those who don't know, it's variable valve. Variable valve timing, timing. Yeah. yeah. And so it is just 
It is an iteration, a little bit more tech, but still not enough tech to get in your way. Yeah. Cameron is mechanically inclined. He knows how to take care of cars and do things. And this is like one where he felt was like very within his realm. I and mean, if you throw computers in a car, it gets suddenly more complicated. He likes the bit more old school feel. Yeah. This one that was, captures that pretty well. This feels great, man. Like I, this is maybe the second time I've driven an NB. I don't have a lot of seat time in them and it has, Remarkably similar driving dynamics to an NA. I think it's a little bit heavier, which I know some people knock it for, but uh, it does feel a little bit more, I don't know, put together, less rattles. Right. It just feels good. And I know you've had your eye on NBs before. And actually, I almost bought an NB in 7NC. I almost really? bought an ND in 7NC. I should really do this video as well. <laughs> like, like why I did it, whereas this is like why you want to maybe do it. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, you've had a soft spot for these, especially with the design. It does have a little bit of a call out to, you know, RX-7 FD series because that is the era. This came out in 99. Not many people know, but a bit of Miata trivia. There was no 1998 Miata. The last NA was 97. The first NB was 99. And yes, as Cameron said, this is 2003 or 2004. Sweet. Four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> and so kind of one of the last runs of the NB right before the yeah. Mazda speed but and he made a good point at the very beginning this is a compelling price tag of a car right now and I'll talk about this a little bit more in the NC but NBs are very desirable in the Miata market and unlike the kind of ugly redheaded stepchild of the of the Miata lineup that the NC has been for a while NBs fetch a pretty penny, the, the, especially the sorted ones. Yeah. And you can typically find NC ones for around the same cost as a sorted NB, maybe even cheaper. Right. So the budget is a very large part of this factor for me. And really NBs and NCs are in the, the realm of money I'd like to spend. Yep. So as much as I love the ND, Quite honestly, I don't know if it's going to be something I can seriously consider because of the amount of money they, they still go for. Right. You're looking at basically a newer car for about the same amount of money, and they both kind of do the same thing. I mean, arguably, all Miatas do the same thing. It's just nuances between them, and for each person, those nuances matter in different ways. And that's why there's so many happy owners here of all four generations. Plus, we had an Elise in a box to show up for some reason. <laughs> uh, but no Fiat 124, which is interesting. But Honestly, let's go see what the NC feels like. I'm a little biased. I Maybe see what you're going to drive this car. <laughs> <laughs> from California well <laughs> <laughs> all the way from Canada and yeah. California. <laughs> you, sir you took 2400 miles to, to do a 700 mile route because you went through Canada oh yeah because you love driving this car so much a little bit yeah so uh big shout out to the Keenod guys who came up from California you. yourself included and this beautiful car Incredible. I'm clearly biased so let's have John talk to Austin about this yeah so why did you choose this NC uh well Jeez. I was working at a dealership at the time, okay. and I wanted to use my employee discount. Ah, that's fair enough. That's yeah. what happened. <laughs> that's what happened, and then I started to just love it more. I was cross-shopping it with an S2000. Okay. And I couldn't justify the $10,000 difference, so I applied the $10,000 to stuff. the accessories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, John has had this car since new, which is awesome. It's very, very cool to see, and it's an 08. Mm -hmm. So last year of the NC1, the coveted NC1. And you might notice this doesn't look like all NC1s. And that's because John threw the, the Mazda Speed catalog at it, um, which is probably why I love it so much. And then he has TE, I can nerd out for a while. But John, why should I consider an NC over the other three generations we have sitting over there? Well, you're a little taller than me. All right, yeah. You'll fit better in this. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, if you're going to go to the track, you probably have a higher ceiling of limitations with this because you can fit much more rubber, much more horsepower, more power, yeah. much more brake, yeah. <laughs> just because of all that stuff. Yeah. It, it's a really nice base like starting point. And then it's also really comfortable as a daily. That's why I chose to drive this instead of my NA on this trip. I needed more space. 
Uh, yeah, that's, that's super valid. And I think that is a unique perspective because you own two of the four generations. Mm -hmm. So basically, John's going to do the thing that the one guy did at SEMA with carbon fiber. Car carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. But instead of carbon fiber, it's going to be <laughs> Mazda Speed. So, John, give us a quick rundown of the Mazda Speed parts that you threw on this. Uh, front bumper, side skirts, rear bumper, three piece spoiler, strut tower bar cold air intake, front sway bar, exhaust. <laughs> and then there's a few bits inside that are carbon fiber or carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Uh, the dash panel, the shift knob, the gear, uh, the uh, e-brake lever, the mirror cover. <laughs> Jeez. So it's just all carbon fiber. <laughs> all Mazda speed. It's mm -hmm. all beautiful. And there's a reason this is Austin's favorite in C here, even including mine, so. Sorry, Jordan. High praise. <laughs> <laughs> High praise, but we should definitely see how it drives because, man, this is this is kind of the lead contender. But we had to bring the competition we just had. in case. Yeah, it had to be a fair fight. Not to overquote Jeremy Clarkson, but speed and power. <laughs> Welcome to your first Miata with a six-speed of the day, and also the first one with. Well, I think the others had AC maybe, but this one has strong AC. Great working AC. <laughs> yeah. And we are sitting low. I mean, I feel like I'm looking up at you. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely the lowest. I've driven a handful of NCs, and this is the lowest I've ever sat in one. I kind of like it, not going to lie. It's very cool. You have room for a helmet with I this. I do. I could fit, like, the biggest helmet in the world in here. <laughs> and it's wild. So this is the second Miata we've driven with a hard top today. This yeah. one is actually nice and padded. And, dude, I mean, you're, you're familiar with NCs. You've driven both of them are the ones that I've had. But this one is a little special, I think. This is like how you would probably spec your NC just like John did. Oh my gosh, yeah. If I worked at a Mazda dealer in 08, it would be game over. I would absolutely have the Mazda Speed NC, which is what John did. And this car is phenomenal. And like Jordan said, this is not my first NC, but it's very interesting to get in one right after driving both the NA and the NB. And you feel just how new and you know, like modern this car feels in comparison to the other two right it just feels yeah i don't know it, it feels like home but that, that's biased because that's this is what i drive basically but there are a lot of reasons for the other ones like i said if you like a more classic vibe i mean that's why i bought an old jeep instead of a new one i just wanted like the classicness but this feels a bit more sorted a bit more body rigidity Obviously a bit more weight too. That was a bit of a, a hot take thing, you know, that Mazda did. The NC was slept on for a long time. A lot of people didn't like it because it was heavier than the other generations, but not by much. As I mentioned in my Doug DeMiro hit piece, for lack of a better term, um, this does have barely more weight than the NB, especially when you're talking about the soft top, which is this one. And I think it's not a weight you'd notice. This has like the best power to weight ratio. Even though it's the heaviest Miata, it has a substantial step up in power. And this one's a bit unique. The NC1 had a two liter MZR engine, actually co-developed with Ford. And it had, um, yeah, about 150 horsepower, something like that. This one actually has an ND, or NC2 engine plopped in. So, I mean, not much difference. Yeah, but. so this feels actually a lot more like your car than most uh, NC1s would. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I. this is such a, a fun and engaging car to drive, but it's also modern and you can live with it. Like John said, he, he drove 2,400 miles on this road trip instead of the 700 miles it is from his home. And he, he did it all in this car, in these crazy seats, and I, he was super comfortable. Yeah. He I loves it. Say, I'm more comfortable than I expected. Now, obviously, if you get an NC with, like, the Grand Touring leather seats, like, those are definitely decently comfortable. Not amazing, not the ND leather seats, but this is fine. Great storage capacity. That's a huge perk of the NC Miata. It has the most storage capacity of all Miata generations. So it really just depends. Like, what key points are you looking for? What do you need in your car? And I, again, I'm biased, but this- I was gonna say, you're, you're selling pretty hard what? right now. <laughs> Should've said someone else in the car with you. <laughs> but uh, this just, I really love it. And I've, I've talked to a lot of other Miata owners who have other generations. They all do seem to like the NC. So it is 
it's it's just come full circle. It was like the most hated Miata, and now it's becoming, I would say, not the most loved. Like, there's just so much passion in the NA ownership crowd, and honestly, the ND ownership crowd, for with good reason, as we'll find out in a second with Justin's car. It is so sorted that you don't really need to do much. No. And that is a perk of ND. I also almost bought an ND. I was pretty close to buying an ND club with the BBS Brembo Recaro package out in California. And I was like, you know what? This car needs nothing. It'd be awesome. But the fact that I wanted to do some things is why I didn't go that route, but instead I went this route. This, Cameron says the NB is like kind of the last one you can really work on. I'd argue this one you can also do a lot of work on. It is a bit more computerized, but it's not quite as computerized as the ND. So, what do you think? Should we go drive the ND? Yeah, and maybe get some, some ribs first. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a Porsche Boxster. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, we have Justin and his Indy RF, which is just, I mean, got to be one of the sexiest cars ever made. This will, did, thank think, you. <laughs> that, is, that is so kind. I, I should also preface that I met Justin for the first time yesterday, and I met him by saying, hey, can I ride in your car on track? And then Justin proceeded to put down, what, like the fifth fastest time of the, of the whole event. This is the so, second fastest time, actually. Oh, second fastest time and of the whole And the event. only reason it wasn't the fastest was because I had a passenger. That's crazy. <laughs> I wanted to share the joy instead of just being selfish and competitive. Yeah, yeah so you so. were you were moving and that was what was like, I literally told Jordan, I was like, maybe I need an ND, I don't know. So Justin, tell us why you decided to pick up this beautiful ND RF. Yeah. Uh, and why you chose it over some of the other generations. Yeah, so really I was looking for a 95M edition. So I was not looking for an ND, <laughs> I was looking for an NA. Um, that one stole my heart and the reality was that in 2021, when I bought it, uh, NAs became classic cars. <laughs> yeah. And what I thought was going to be a $5,000 car no. turned into they're, six, they're seven, eight, anymore. more than yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, started brainstorming and NDs are valued very high or they were at the time by the, uh, I believe it's the National Automotive Dealer Association. Okay. And so I could get into this car with less money than paying cash for an NA and pay off my car loan and have the same payment with this car. Yeah. So, and I got a new car, yeah, which is kind of cool. And it's like a comfortable, so, nice new car. Yeah. We'll talk more about yeah, when yeah. Gordon and I take it for a, a little spin. But that's, that's, I mean, that's incredibly valid of like the NA, NB, like those classic Miatas have shot up in value over the last like five, 10 years. And it like, you're not crazy far off with a new car where you can get new car interest rates, new car reliability, it's a, it's a compelling argument. Oh so yeah. If you were to give me like, an, like a 30 second elevator pitch of why I should choose one of these over one of the other three cars we just drove, what would you say? I mean, the reality is this car is gonna work all the time, every day, beat the crap out of it. It's gonna keep going and it looks way meaner than yeah. the other three options. It's, it's probably angry. the most aggressive. It's angry, the tack, it's the only Miata with a tack in the center. Yeah. So, Porsche Ferrari vibes, right? <laughs> well, the new 911 got rid of the center tack. So now if you want a center tack, buy a Miata instead of a 911. There you go. Option, you know? That's right, that's right. So, I mean, there, I, I can go on. How much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's selling it over here. There wow. we go, there we go, yeah. Um, but, I mean, the mods are there. Everyone loves this car. Yeah. It goes fast and it can just be a comfortable daily if that's what you want to. So it's up to you. You pick the RF if you want flexibility. I drove this in the winter, Michigan yeah. winters. That's incredible. So, yeah, I'll stop there because okay. I could go okay. <laughs> Right, yeah, now's the more important thing, you driving it. Give it some juice. This sounds good. This sounds good. And phenomenal. I think the center tack really is special about the ND, and I haven't given that enough credit in the past. Justin has... Uh, he explained some of the mods that he did yesterday, and this little tiny steering wheel is one of them, and this thing is adorable. It makes it feel very playful. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, Justin put down some incredible track times in this with really only handling uh, handling mods, just suspension, wheels, tires. Um, so this is, 
it, it's a remarkably capable car out of the box, and I think that's why, why in the NC, Jordan said a lot of ND owners love this car for that reason. Now, I first drove the ND, I guess, wow, eight years ago, uh, 2016, and something that really spoke to me was similar but different to the NA, where you look down the hood and you have those aggressive... The ridges. Like ridges. The NA, you have the pop-ups, but this, you have the ridges. It kind of calls back to the NA with that. I, I really like that. Like, looking down the hood just feels really cool in this. But also, the handling, I mean, this feels like a modern car. Like, yes. NC, compared to the others, is like modern, but then this makes the NC feel a little bit old school. It does. Now, you're also in your first car of the day with electronic power steering. Can you really tell a difference? Not drastically. There, there is some. There's a, but... I think there's a bit less road feel, per se, but not much less. Mazda still knows. I mean, you, even their SUVs are like more like engaging the drive than most SUVs. Absolutely. So Mazda knows how to make a driver's car, and they decided EPS was the way to go. They didn't need hydraulic anymore. Much of this may have some purists, but <laughs> honestly, hot take. OHRP with power steering is fine. That being said, I really love the hydraulic rack in the NC. Like, this thing feels phenomenal. And Justin made a really solid point of, I think if you were buying a Miata for your only vehicle, you should really only be considering the NC or the ND if you don't have a ridiculously high threshold for noise and you want some modern amenities. Right. And I think if this were my only car, if I didn't already have another daily, I think this would be the choice. I think because of what Justin said of... It just works. It just works. You have great amenities. It feels like the CX-5 that my wife and I used to have, but so much more fun. Maybe not quite as practical as the NC with the, the cargo space and the interior space but it is dead nuts reliable and very refined and quality in here, so. Yeah, so I should mention maybe part of the reason I didn't go in D originally is because they were still having some transmission issues. The early NDs do have transmission reliability problems and it just wasn't quite as proven of a platform as the NC, but I think now that we're in its ninth or eighth year. Third um, sub-generation? Yeah, we have ND3 is now out. They really have figured this car out. Yeah, absolutely. And it has modern things like a touchscreen stuff, which of course, I put that in my my Miata. Any Miata can have that be put in, but it fits this car clearly really well. Yeah. And it just is modern. If you'd want a single car to do it all, this is a compelling option. It is not quite the storage space or cabin room as the NC, but it's still a compelling single car option. If you don't need all that storage space, all right, Austin, you've just driven four noble contenders for Miatas. What I mean, a fun test. Are you kidding fun, me? <laughs> yes, and we could have taken this much further. We yeah. could have done NC1, 2, 3, and we th could have thrown a Mazda Speed in the mix, a Fiat 124 Spider. Like, there are other Miata versions, a soft top. We could have driven them with the tops down without the removable hard tops. That wasn't the point. The point really, because when you get to a Miata generation, the sub-generations are not much different. Yeah. The big differences are A, B, C, and D. How do you feel? I thoroughly enjoyed all of them for various different reasons. This isn't a cop out. This is like Miata is always the answer. Yeah, hey, I thanks mean, for watching. Bye. <laughs> yeah, like it, I absolutely love that. There's a reason why 150 plus Miatas have gathered here this weekend. Um, but I think for me, it's it's probably an NC shocker. Um, <laughs> but I honestly really enjoy driving the NB a lot more than I thought I would. And Cameron's about to come in and say it has the best curves. <laughs> yep. It's got the best curves. But I actually was really shocked by the NB, and I, I, I don't know. I may have to look at it a little bit more, maybe take my wife for a test drive and see what her, her threshold would be. Tune in next time when we have Addy drive all four <laughs> generations of Miata. <laughs> but I, I think for practicality purposes and price, an NC1 with the appearance package, I think that's it. I think that's my car. If I had to sell my Lexus for some reason, I'm buying one of these. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree. We'll see some of you down there with pitchforks. We'll see some of you down there with heart emojis. <laughs> I think there's a, there's a variety. There's a lot of people there passionate about what their car is, and that's cool. I'd love to see you guys leave a comment down below with why you chose your specific generation and... I'll be, I'll be reading the comments. Well, I'll, yeah, he'll be... I'll he'll be, be down there. He'll be replying to every single... <laughs> 
comment. Oh, no. <laughs> so that's it. I mean, we basically already wrapped this up, but let us know what your favorite generation is, why you picked yours, and maybe if we could have a vote for Austin's, because that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Let's just see what the most generation of the audience is. We'll see you in another video very soon. Definitely check out our other Flying Miata summer camp coverage, and bye. <laughs>